Well, I hope you're ready for four layers of RNG. Hey everyone and welcome back to another Warcraft video. Today we're doing a deep dive into the new corrupted gear system of Visions of Nazoth. We've tested this extensively in game. We're also armed with the detailed data mining of Wowhead and Blizzard's own post detailing their goals and how the system works. So today you're going to learn how the new mechanic works, though of course the final balance is uh, yet to be seen. Now my opinions do tend to run hot and gearing, they certainly do here, so I'll save them till after the breakdown. Now one thing I will mention is a lot of people say not to give feedback because it's only PTR, and this is often said when people don't like the feedback, and it's pretty absurd. It's called the public test realm for a reason. It exists for players to give Blizzard early feedback. Blizzard in their post literally ask for feedback on the system as a whole, so with that in mind, let's get to it. So Corrupted Gear is the replacement for Titanforging, and it is not a permanent addition to the game. And yes, that does mean that gear is not going to Titanforge in this patch, currently not even turn stats or gem sockets appear on the test gear. Now this new corruption system is essentially titan forging and benthic gear effects blended in together. So corrupted gear will drop with a positive effect and a corruption value. The total corruption of your character is the sum total of all the corruption on your gear and your character will experience negative effects depending on its level of corruption. So the first thing we'll do is cover the negative effects. Now if you've got any corruption at all then you'll get the grasping tendrils debuff and this one basically means that taking damage has a chance to slow your character and the scope of the slow will increase with the more corruption that you get. It can be up to an over 100. Then our second one, Corrupted Zone, kicks in at 20 corruption. It just drops a void zone on the floor that deals damage to you based on your corruption level. Now, this started off at 17k base damage on PTR, but by level 50 corruption, it deals 50k per tick. And Wowhead note that it can crit for 100% or 150% its normal damage. So realistically, if you take too much of this, it will kill you, and it will present a major problem in group content. Imagine if your group is, say, stacking for a raid mechanic, only to have a void zone that's 10 yards just drop beneath you. Sure, it'll only impact you, but you'll have to break formation, and that is very bad for, say, dealing with the damage soak mechanic. We then have Grand Delusions. This kicks in at 40 corruption, and it spawns in an enemy that will chase you down, but neither us or Wowhead have actually managed to get it to proc, so we'll have to test that later. And then we've got the real kicker at 60 corruption creeping death. This is, this is crazy. It's an always on damage taken increase and healing taken decrease. And that's really rough. And the thing is, it will increase the damage you take from, say, the Void Zone uh, Corruption debuff, and that can really be deadly. I got over 100 Corruption and was basically globaled by it. So really rolling with anything past, I'd say, 30 or 40 Corruption just seems like a, a pretty terrible idea, really, especially because the effects just aren't compatible with how group content is actually played, the negative effects, that is. Either Blizzard forgot that World of Warcraft is not played like Diablo, or they specifically designed this stuff to be a problem in dungeon and raid content so that, well, players are de-incentivized from going too ham. And it really is not stuff that you can play around. There are, say, raid execution mechanics, or like raid mechanics that you'd need to execute that say that void zone would really mess up. But anyway, that's the downsides of corruption. Let's talk about the upsides and also explain how corruption levels work. So, currently, each bit of corrupted gear can have one of 11 positive effects. And that's kind of why I said they were a little bit like benthic gear. There will be a few effects that will really be good for your class, and I mean really. Now, this also brings back a balance problem that I'll cover later, but to tease you, remember how some of the benthic effects could be worth like 40 item levels? They were so powerful. Well, it seems like we're going to have that again, but in a really big way. So, each bit of gear drops with a positive effect and a corruption level. As I said, the sum of your corruption will lead to you getting the negative effects that I covered earlier. Now, currently, each one of the positive effects has three different magnitudes, so for crit damage, Damage, as an example, that damage bonus drops at three tiers of power, a 5% bonus, 6% bonus, and 7% bonus. That's not all, though, as the corruption can vary within a tier's range. So right now, tier 1 is 5 to 10 corruption, 2 is 12 to 17 corruption, and tier 3 is 20 to 25 corruption. Now this means that if you, say, drop the 6% bonus crit damage, that's the second tier, so that bit of corrupted gear will give you between 12 and 17 corruption. Now, because of this, you'll want as many of the 
positive effects as you can get, but as few of the negatives as is possible. And that means that, say, dropping a 6% bonus crit damage leg with 12 corruption is far better than dropping a 6% bonus crit leg with 17 corruption, because if you get those good rolls across a few bits of gear, then you'll be able to put on an extra effect or two, or maybe wear, uh, you know, an effect at a higher tier of corruption, right? So that, I mean, that really does matter, because some of these effects could be worth, you know, 20, 30, maybe even 40 item levels, if we're going by the Benthic situation, and some of them certainly seem to be that currently. Now, this means that we do have four layers of RNG on our gear. Will your gear be corrupted? Will the gear have a positive effect that you want? Will it have a positive effect that you want and have a low amount of corruption for its tier of positive effects? And that does mean that in some ways there is more RNG now than ever, and based on the design of the early effects, they will have a significant impact on your throughput. There is also a slight, well, I'd say anti-pattern in terms of the design. Like, there are some effects that, say, are just completely useless for a tank, completely useless for a healer, or maybe you get a healer-friendly one, but you're a DPS. And I think those are rather unfortunate situations where what should be a rewarding moment will actually be quite a letdown, because you could get a really high-tier corrupted item, but just have a positive effect that really is not that good at all. And I think that would objectively be worse than, say, some aspects of the Titan Forging system. Now, with all this said, you are able to manage your corruption, so the Heart of Azeroth has a new minor slot, and from what I understand on the PTR, that slot will only take a new anti-corruption essence. So that's one thing you can do, but the primary method of decreasing corruption is your legendary cloak. Blizzard in their post said that as you upgrade the cloak, you will get increased corruption resistance. Now, many speculated that corruption resistance would be part of the infinite trade in the Heart of Azeroth, but Blizzard have not mentioned that, and probably with that cloak, I think it maxes out at eye level 475, so you'll get however many, you know, corruption reductions come from doing that. Now, you might be thinking, okay, if my drops are corrupted, but I can't handle any more corruption, is that drop useless? Well, technically no, because you can cleanse corrupted gear for free, and that means you can always use gear that drops for you. And of course, that will remove the corruption effect, though, so you'll also lose the positive. So overall here, it seems like your ever-increasing tolerance to corruption via the cloak will be a steady nerf to battle for Azeroth content. Indeed, you often do see them go a little bit off the rails with the final patch of an expansion, maybe a little bit like how Legion powered us up so much through 7.3 and 7.3.5, but I, like, I expect Blizz will not go that high because going from, like, complete god to BFA starting character did not feel good. Now, going into this system, like, in a realistic scenario, assuming you get, say, 20 or so resistance from your first essence and the start of the legendary cloak, you'll be able to wear, like, two bits of, like, perfect roll tier 1 corrupted gear and get, like, no downsides, or maybe just one bit of tier 1 gear that's a little bit more corrupted. But overall, I just can't see players wanting to go too much above 30 corruption. And when you look at the maths here, it's very clear that Blizz are prioritizing having many minorly corrupted bits of gear instead of a few very corrupted bits of gear, just in terms of the, like, efficiency of the corruption to the positive effect, but the balance could change there. Now, this does create a problem, right, where you could get a new bit of gear that's too corrupted with too much of a positive effect, but you know it'll be great after a few weeks of cloak upgrades. That means you won't want to cleanse it because that would remove your beneficial effect, but, you know, you can't equip it, you don't cleanse it, so it's just a dead bit of gear for a few weeks, and I think that's a bit awkward. Cleansing is basically removing your Titan Forging and Benthic effect so that you can wear the gear now, but that's not going to feel good to players. Now, I think the best way to jump into opinions here is to actually go through Blizzard's itemization philosophy that they recently posted along with this new system. They said they are always looking to create moments of excitement, heard that before, uh, and choices and options to customize gameplay to suit your playstyle. Now, I would immediately say back that their attempts at excitement through Titan Forging have made gear less exciting, they've increased apathy, and the random acquisition of the Legion Legendaries was a very bad idea. Now, they talk about choices and customization, but here's the thing. If they really wanted that, they would not roll with a simple single target or AoE build for every spec in the game, and Azerite gear would not have such a painful reforge cost if the design intent was that you were constantly customizing your builds along with, say, you know, your Azerite and your new corrupted gear. So that logic just doesn't add up, guys. Now, moving on through the post, Ian said that they've heard players' complaints that Titan forging makes progression feel less rewarding because you might already have really good gear that Titan forged from previous content, and that feeling that an item could be better will 
can lead to a disappointing reward moment, which Blizzard doesn't want. And I agree with them, not really a good situation. But here's the thing, this system does not solve those problems at all. If you get a bit of corrupted gear that you can't wear, you can either remove the extra stuff on it that makes it unique, so, you know, in order to wear it now by purifying it, and that's going to feel really bad, or you can just put it in your bag and wait a few weeks until you've got more corruption resistance. I mean, come on, guys. Come on, Blizz. How can you write that post and think that this system solves those problems? Like, are you... Do you have a realistic view of your game? Come on. So that's what Blizzard had to say in their post, with them also just adding towards the end that corruption is not permanent, but is an extension of the Nazoth theme. Now, they end it by asking for feedback on the broad system, so let's give them some feedback. The gameplay is pretty much a case, right, of getting as many positive effects as you can while managing acceptable corruption levels and just doing, you know, your, your weekly, I guess whatever the weekly grind is to get your cloak up. Now, I get the design intent here, but frankly, this is a system that would work in Diablo or Path of Exile, not World of Warcraft. People talk about the devs not playing WoW, and I don't think that's true, I don't really think that's fair, but I do think that they maybe have a warped perspective because their job involves creating the game, and they don't always do a good job of, you know, moving away from that perspective and really understanding the player perspective. I mean, looking at this system, I look at this and I just see a different game to World of Warcraft. I see a system that is designed pretty much in isolation. Now, they say they've been listening to player concerns, but from what I've seen, that's not the case. And that's because they've met player concerns over RNG with extreme, multi-layered RNG. Now, sure, some players will think that no titan forging to mess with item levels fixes part of the problem, and that'll be good for trading gear, certainly, but that's not overall the case, because these positive effects will be worth, in many cases, dozens of item levels. This probably damages the relationship between item level and throughput even more than titan forging did. And I mean, it's almost, sometimes it's almost as if they're paid off by raid bots. Like that's how just needlessly complex they make these gear systems. Like this is not going to benefit Blaze. It's not going to benefit players. It is going to benefit like the raid bots Patreon. <laughs> so it just doesn't make gear more simple and easy to understand. And you know, WoW is also not a game that has a large number of diverse specs. And if Blizzard wanted, you know, different corrupted gear builds to be experimented with, then the rapidly increased increasing Azerite gear reforging costs, they're an anti-pattern to that design intent. I don't know why they do that. They also made it such the positive effects of this system are extremely boring. Flat damage increases for the most part, or just, you know, flat increases for the most part. Uh, that's something they've said they think is boring in the past. The only interesting gameplay comes from circumventing the punishments that they give to you. Now, I think that might work in a game with a really fast loop and the kind of just look and feel of Diablo or Path of Exile, but, I mean, for the seven millionth time, Time, World of Warcraft and Diablo are different games, and I really wish Blizz would just get that, finally. This also clearly continues a pattern of overcompensation from Blizzard. The positive and negative effects of the Crucible of Storms gear were really cool, and I praised them at the time. They were an option, they were a part of gearing to think about. They did not define the entire gearing system of the game. Blizzard seemed to have seen that that was well received, seen the benthic gear participation, and basically just thought, oh, clearly players want both of those things to the max and also want them to be the foundation of gear in World of Warcraft, because corruption is foundational to the gear of 8.3. Uh, guys, with 8.3, it seems like you are designing World of Warcraft's gear as if you are designing the seasonal quirks of Path of Exile. Again, they're entirely different games. And I've got to be real with you here, the lack of clear progression and the mountains of RNG is the primary reason why I'm completely unmotivated to work on my characters, that plus the, you know, inevitable catch-up. It's not like how, say, back in the day, and I know that's a, a trope, but, you know, King Yearman's big red sword that was an epic that I could get from Utgard Keep. I'd just go there, I'd run it a bunch, I'd get my thing, and I'd be really happy that I've done that. That's just not really possible in the current gearing system of the game. You know, now bits of gear are not defined by themselves. They are defined by what an external system does to them. That's very unlike where I think RPG gear should be. I mean, heck, by applying the design elements of the Crucible of Storms gear across all of 8.3, they've managed to lose the uniqueness that they had, and that makes it no longer interesting. They were cool because it was just a few unique slots that had very clear, uh, you know, drawbacks and uh, positives. This is just more RNG, more complexity. How Ian could say the corrupted gear is based off listening to player feedback and then push this to the PTR, I just do not know. I mean, here's a more simple system, right? Gear just drops at a fixed item level, whatever, but you can get a maximum of, say, three Black Empire relics, and you can slot them into your gear and unslot them at will, and these relics contain a positive 
positive effect and a negative effect, and they're tradable within groups when raiding, and you're capped wearing three of them at once. There you go. That would be a small, thematic system that would add a little bit of flavor to the new content without taking over the whole gearing system and homogenizing it completely. Maybe you could add them, remove them, or modify them with a resource, something like that. I mean, I literally just thought of that idea as I typed it, and I think it would have fewer negative externalities than the current system Blizzard wishes to implement. I mean, it's basically just souped up minor glyphs, or major glyphs even. Remember major glyphs? Yeah, why not just do those? I mean, here's what really gets me. This is clearly taking, like, so much design time to work out and to balance. But does it make the game better? No, I don't think it is. It's just another, like, hurdle to deal with. Does this make gear more interesting? I mean, I don't think so. And when it does, it's in a way that would work for an ARPG loot game, like Diablo, not a slow burn MMO with heavily gated weekly sources of gear. The design time that went into this system could have went into God knows what else. And WoW has serious design issues in other elements that are in other like aspects that need to be worked on. That they just invented a new problem for players to solve in order to get back to the same relative power they would be at anyway shows that they're just caught in a holding pattern of directionless development. They're designing systems to counter problems, then they're designing systems to counter problems caused by the systems that they've designed to cause other problems, and then they're designing other systems to counter those problems, which invariably, of course, cause their own problems. There is a beauty in simplicity when it comes to design, right? That's, you know, that's what a really beautiful design is. It's simple, it's readable, it does the job just right. It doesn't require raid bots, and importantly, it would allow the developers to stop wasting their time constantly rebuilding the worst part of the game. It just seems like they've come up with the most needlessly complex, expensive to implement, and externality-causing solution to the gearing problem. Just keep it simple, my dudes. We all just love a simple gearing process paired with other things to do with our characters. I think that's the main thing here. Get gear working well and just focus on, you know, other cool stuff to do for our characters. Patch 8.3's horrific visions, at least in solo, I think are really darn cool. Like when the stakes are higher. That's a great example of another fun bit of content. Really, I think Blizzard should just think about the opportunity cost in actually dealing with this so much. Titan Forging has been lambasted for years. They keep on just trying and trying and trying when... I mean, to be honest with you, it seems like they're doing this out of sheer pride at this stage. I do not see how this is making World of Warcraft better. Mostly, I just see how it's making World of Warcraft worse. And I get that there are some ways for more casual players that a system like this could be cool and exciting. I really think that they could do other systems or other things that would achieve that goal while having less negative externalities. Really, it's the externalities, right? The, you know, the sort of costs of doing the things that Blizzard think will be a benefit that they don't necessarily seem to anticipate. That's the big issue here. And overall, to me, it's just opportunity cost. I mean, this all takes up designer time. Designer time could be going into so many more things that would actually be fun to engage with, that could actually be things for our characters to do that are new. I think that they have this false premise of just infinite engagement via gear that is based off, say, the ongoing participation in Diablo 3, or maybe how games like Path of Exile do quite well in the long tail, but I don't think they understand that that's not what World of Warcraft is. It's an MMORPG. Gear should be unique, gear should be cool, gear should not be homogenized into one big system, and from a player psychology perspective, I think just about everything they've said has been debunked time and time and time again, and this new system does really, I mean, it just shows they don't understand the problems. And that's my take on it. It could change and it's bouncing on PTR. Fundamentally, though, I think it's pretty, well, it's pretty terrible. My only hope, I suppose, is that this, like, this has removed Titan Forging for this patch, and that does mean that when the next expansion rolls around, there could be something else instead of Titan Forging, and it might be better than this system. That's kind of, that's my last hope for World of Warcraft gearing uh, that I'm, I'm holding out, but yeah. I mean, TLDR, I just wish the team would catch themselves on, look in the mirror, just implement something nice and simple that they could do a little bit more quickly, and just put their design time into new things for our characters to do. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'd absolutely love to hear what you've got to say about this system down below. And with that, I will see you next time.